Hey, Christy here from Lemon Crafty. I want to show you how to do an advanced method of uh, paper bead glazing. It's called the dipping method. And I've been doing this method now for about four years. I started out uh, making paper beads about five years ago. And this is my favorite method. To me, it's just more... It's, it's, I don't care how you, how you glaze your beads. It's going to be time consuming, but I just like this method better. I think you get a better quality bead. Um, you don't have to mess with brushing them by hand. It's faster in a lot of ways. Um, I, I just prefer this method and I'm showing you this method because if you decide to get into this and on a more professional level or advanced level, I think this might be the way you might consider going. Now, I've got, for one thing, I want to tell you this may be a kind of a long video because it, I'm showing you a technique here that might take a little bit, but I do have a disclaimer. And my disclaimer is, when I come to you with anything that I do, whether it be paper beading, limb knitting, anything I do on my channel, for one, I'm not being um, supported by any company. I'm not getting any money, monetization from anybody. They are my honest reviews, my honest opinions. I'm not knocking anybody else's choices. Uh, if you take it derogatory, that's your choice. It's not because I mean it that way. I'm not downing what you do. I feel everybody is free to do their own research and make their own choices. I'm just bringing to you what works for me, what has been tried and true for me, and I'm giving it to you as another choice. So... I have had people say, well, why do you use this when you could use wood hardener and you could use this, that, and the other? And I'm like, well, I have reasons why I don't want to use wood hardener. There's two reasons why I don't want to use wood hardener for an undercoat to, to uh, dip my beads. Number one, it's used to be, you know, make wood strong that's rotten. It's used for wood. Is paper a form of wood? Yes, it is a form of wood. But wood hardener is not marketed to be used in crafting. It's, it's marketed to be used in home improvement and that kind of thing. Um, another thing is some of these things that people are using and you need to really look up the um, hazards on them. Um, I, I don't really know about all of them, but I know, uh, I know there is like a odorless polyurethane or something now. That does not mean just because it's odorous that it's not giving off fumes. That can still be fumes coming off of it that could harm you, uh, some of this stuff. But I just tend to use things that I know has been marketed for jewelry or crafting that it's okay if you get it on your skin or if it's against your skin, you're not going to have absorption of some kind of chemicals that you don't want or fumes for something while you're working with it. And the main reason for that is because I have severe asthma, I have breathing issues, and I don't want to irritate my lungs and cause asthma attacks. <laughs> but still, I wouldn't want it on my skin if it was had wood hardener on it or polyurethane on it um, because it's not marketed for jewelry and crafting. But if somebody chooses that, that is their choice. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's my disclaimer. That's my thoughts. So I'll get off my soapbox about that. I just want to make it clear and we're going to move on. <laughs> okay, what you're going to need to do this is you will need some fishing line and you will need this contraption or something of this nature like this. Uh, this is nothing but a box that I turned the flaps in. I think I cut them off so much and then turned them in so it would give some stability. And I've got a piece of a box across the top here let me tilt that up a little bit. And I've got clips here. I've got dowel rods. And I can hang 10 strands here. You see, here's one I just dipped a little while ago. And I can hang 10 strands on here. Five on one side, five on the other. Because there's clips. There's five clips across the other side. And the dowel rod, right, uh, excuse me, rod goes all the way through. I do put foil in the bottom of my tray here to catch my drips because I don't want all those drips building up in the bottom. I wouldn't suggest using wax paper because some of these glazes and stuff I've noticed, um, wax paper kind of deteriorates with it. I know with the glue all it does, but 
Normally, my choice is Sergeant Sark lamination glue for my undercoat and diamond glaze for my um, top coat. Glue all is a, a product of Elmer's, which is safe. And uh, diamond glaze is a product of Judicans, which is used in jewelry making and that type stuff, uh, crafting. And here is, I don't, uh, here is diamond glaze. And I buy the glue all by the gallon, and I buy the largest size of Sargent's Art. Now, I prefer Sargent's Art, but Sargent's Art has gone up, and I'm looking for an alternative, and that's the only reason I'm changing, because I've used Sargent's Art as my undercoat and diamond glaze as my uh, top glaze for all these years, but the price has changed, and I was looking for um, alternative because of the pricing. So I'm going to be trying glue all. I'm using all my diamond glaze up I had left. But I'm going to be trying glue all as my undercoat instead of Sargent's art. And I'm going to be trying triple thick diluted as my uh, my top coat. I don't know how that's going to work. If it don't work, I'm going back to my um, Sargent's art and diamond glaze. Even though it costs more, I'll just pay it because I know it works. If this don't work and don't produce as good of a strong bead, then I'll just have to bite the bullet and pay the price. Because I want to make something that is worthy of you know if it was to get dropped in the water or um submerged or something and as long as you take it out with a, in a you know reasonable amount of time it's not going to damage it and i have water tested my beads with the sardis art and the diamond glaze and they were fine after 20 minutes i haven't tested them long longer than 20 minutes but they were fine after 20 minutes of being submerged in um water temperature bottled water so we're going to see how the glue all and the triple thick does. Now, uh, if you don't, you don't have to use a base coat, but I do like to use a base coat. I feel like my beads are better protected with a base coat with the Sargent Sart or glue all. You don't have to. That's your choice. It all depends on how much money you want to spend. Some people use Mod Podge. I don't know if it's because of my climate or what it is, but Mod Podge, I just do not have good results of Mod Podge. It dries gummy. It never fully hardens and looks glass-like to me um, for what I want it for. I, I, I'm, I'll use it sometimes on, like, paper mache or, or like, the, my... Um, paper bead yarn bowl I made and I did use triple thick on one end and I used Mod Podge on the other because I knew it was going to be mine and when I get around to making one of those and doing a video I'm going to show you the difference of why I don't like Mod Podge you'll you'll see why I don't like it for me if it works for you go for it you know that, that's up to you now you may ask me why I water mine down I water mine down for one it lasts longer two it to me produces a better looking bead and it dries more evenly and um I, I just i feel like it fills in the hole the hole in there and gets that really good encoded in there better if it's thinner than if you try to dip it thick and some of these things you can't dip thick i mean you could dip one in diamond glaze thick but it would be a it would be a mess <laughs> and i'm not so sure how much it would um coat the inside and that's another reason you want it thinner so it will coat the inside if it's too thick it's just going to clump up and dry in the middle and you're not going to be able to thread anything through it so there's really three reasons there why i um dilute my glazes and glues so what we're going to do is we're going to you need to have something heavy like this one i have a heavy bead here and I have a heavy bead here. You need to have heavy beads on either end. Now, some people use um, crimp tubes and they make a loop. And you can do that too if you want to. It's up to you. This is just the way I do it. And if you don't put a heavy bead on the end, it will curl up like that. And then you might have glue pulling up in your last bead down here. Now, these two are what I call waist beads. I always put two waist beads at the bottom and two waist beads at the top. And then I put the beads that I want to 
glaze in the middle. And the reason I do that is another reason because when you are glazing, you want that glaze to run freely down through there. You don't want it to get pulled up because if it pulls up, if you put this good bead, the one that you want to glaze down here at the end, it may pull up and stop up your hole. And then the bead won't, it'll be a waste bead and you won't be able to do nothing with it. You just have to throw it away. So, and sometimes it might happen if you, at the third one, but most of the time it don't. It'll drain on down through these two and stop these up instead of this one. So you need to have waste beads. And waste beads are typically just beads that you've rolled and everybody has them that didn't turn out like you wanted them to. Um, maybe they didn't glaze right. Maybe they didn't uh, roll right. Maybe the paper tore when you're rolling them. I, you know, whatever whatever the reason, but I have a little bag here that I put my waste beads in, and that's what I use. And if, when I break them apart after they're been glazed, if they're okay, and the holes aren't stopped up, and they're dry, I just throw them back in my bag and reuse them. There's no point in throwing them away. I mean, you can keep recycling them as long as the hole's open where you can use them. So you'll need that, and you'll need... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. You'll need a pair of uh, jewelry wire cutters to cut your fishing line. I wouldn't suggest using regular scissors because this uh, line is kind of, it's not real thick. It's 25 pounds, but um, it'll dull your scissors after a while if you use it too much. So, let's get started. I'm going to cut off a piece of line about, I don't know, a foot long maybe. And maybe a little bit longer. And I'm going to put a heavier bead at the end. One of these. This is just some beads that I've gotten. Um, I think I bought them in a mixture at Walmart or somewhere for a little of nothing. And I use them as my weighted beads. So you can... Um, Some people, I've seen some people use other stuff. Whatever works to weight it down, that's up to you. Um, I just thread it through the top. Thread it through the top. And then go back through the top. And you're going to make a little, make a little loop right there. Make sure it got that tight. Sometimes you, if it's a odd shaped bead or a, a long bead, sometimes you might have to do that twice to lock it in there. I'll just push it back through there again. You want enough sticking out that where you can clip, put your clip on there and hang it up. Okay. So that's, that's good enough. Okay, now I want to take two waist beads, which is in my little bag here, and I try to always get two that the holes are pretty good size so that the dip will go through them pretty good and they'll drain well. There we go, I got four there. So I need two at the bottom, two at the top, and then here's my weighted bead. Then I put my first waist bead on here, my second waist bead on here, okay? All right. And then I get my beads I want to dip. And I put start stringing them on. And there's one. Now, like I said, some people make loops on the end. They'll make loops down here on the end, both ends. And I'll put a crimp tube like this on there and not use a clip 
but I just prefer to use the clip because it gives me something to hold when I'm dipping my bead and not not just hold my loop but that's just me it's up to you so we're just and it don't matter you don't have to um, put the same kind of bead on yours you can mix them up I, I just put whatever on mine um, there's a like a tube bead I apologize for my lighting tonight my bulb burned out so I gotta get me another bulb so there we go two waist beads weighted bead I'm putting my beads I want to dip on here let's put just a few more and you don't want the end of your strand hitting your foil down here. You want it to have plenty of room and air for the air to circulate around it. You don't want to put your clips too close together if you decide to do this the way I have or however you do it, your your dowel rods or whatever. And I was going to tell you, I think those dowel rods that fit in those size clips, and I got these clips at the dollar store. Um, like, where's a loose one at? I had one here somewhere. Uh, oh, here we go. I got these like some in a pack for a dollar, the dollar store, Dollar General, or I mean Dollar Tree. And the dowel that I've got in them that fits in them just right is five sixteenths round, and it was a 36 inch long, which that don't really make any difference. And I'm not sure how long these are cut. I'll have to measure one before. I end the video so I can tell you how long it is cut to fit them. Of course, that would that would depend on how far apart you put your clips on each on each side. How how wide this piece up here at the top is that your clips are on. But I'll measure one anyway, just to give you an idea. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's enough for right now because that's gonna hang down pretty good ways. So we got all our beads on here that we want to dip. Now I'm gonna put my two waist beads on after that because I want them to protect the drips when I'm dipping. And then there's my two waist beads at the top. And then I'm gonna put my weighted bead on here and do the same thing. I'm gonna go through the bottom and then wrap it around like this go back through the bottom again pull it through tight up against the other bead and if it's a little loose you can always go back through again as long as you got enough of um, fishing wire and I'm gonna clip this because I don't want it quite this long okay now we're ready to dip all right Let's move these out of the way. Move our fishing line out of the way. Now I've already stirred up my glue all. I'm just going to do a dip in glue all because this will be my first dip. I don't need to dip in my diamond glaze yet. So I'll take my lid off and I'm going to put my clip on and I just go down through the middle there and just clip it make sure it's in that clip good like that okay and then I'm just gonna dip it in the jar let me move my camera a little bit so you can see what I'm doing there we go okay so I'm gonna dip it in the jar and this is really good because this way you don't have to worry about getting glue on you and just keep dunking it up and down two or three times if you get glue on the outer rim we'll, we'll talk about how to get that off and and keep it from sealing your jar so you can't get back in it in a minute just keep drip jump uh jumping it <laughs> dipping it up and down kind of pull it out let it kind of drip a little bit right there dip it back down in there again just do this a few times we'll make sure you get them good and saturated you don't want to stir around there too much, but you can kind of stir a little bit if you want to. 
I do suggest you put a towel down or something when you do this, because if you don't, you'll get your, your uh, drips of glue on your table or whatever surface you use unless you got it protected. And then you can pull, you can put your jar up closer to you where you're going to hang your beads. So you want, you can minimize your drips and then just take it out and hang it up on your dowel. That was wanting to move on me. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll let that hang there for a minute. If you get some on your clip, it's okay. Try not to, but if you do, it's okay. Um, I'll let that hang there for a minute or two and let it do some dripping. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me move my glue all for a second. Move my camera over here. It's dripping down. See the drips there? You need to let that drip kind of do its thing. And it's dripping from the top all the way down through those holes, coating those holes in there to protect them. And once it kind of stops dripping a little bit, then I'll flip it around and hang it up by that end. So that way it'll be weighted on both ends. Now, like I, I think I mentioned this, if you don't weight it, it'll make it curl up and you could possibly lose that last bead because it would the instead of hanging vertical it'd be hanging horizontal and the glue would pull in the middle or it wouldn't completely coat it around inside so you do want something to weight it down i've seen people use um fishing weights and uh, just different things whatever you got you you know if you can find you some uh glass beads like this that are cheap uh, that's a good way to go not spend a lot of money that's what i use so this looks like it has pretty much dripped enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to unclip it. Be careful not to hit it on anything. I'm going to clip this in. And I'm going to hang it back up. I've already... Um, Change the other one. I've already flipped it around. So now my white weighted bead is up here, and then this gray one's down here. So I'll probably flip them again here one more time, about three times. So that way the glue will evenly distribute and drip. Now, when they're completely dry, which usually takes 24 more hours uh, depending on the temperature and the humidity and right now we're in summer so it's very humid here in central North Carolina and it may take longer than 24 hours but when they're completely dry they won't have any dampness and you'll really need to kind of pay attention in between here where they're touching they might appear dry outside but they may still be damp underneath here and you need to have plenty of airflow what I do sometimes, I'll plug in a, a box fan and have a box fan uh, blow around them or have a ceiling fan on where there'll be some air circulation because they need that air to dry properly when it's hot and humid like this. And um, then when they completely dry, I will break them apart. They'll just pop apart. And then I will redip them a second time in the glue all. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll let them completely dry, break them apart. And then I'll do my two dips in my diamond glaze or triple thick, whatever you're going to use, whatever you decide to use. And um, they're good to go after that. So I will come back again when I do my last diamond glaze dip and they get dry. And I will show you how I break them apart and show you what they look like when they're finished. So right now they're just really matte looking. Um, they're wet. So it's going to be, that's just my undercoat. My glue also undercoat. Okay, let me move my camera back. And 
how I make sure that my glue all doesn't seal on me because I got glue on here. I wipe it off. I've already got a little bit of water on my towel and I make sure I got some water on my towel and I wipe it off around the rim. I don't wipe on the inside because I don't want to get bacteria in there. And I make sure I get that glue off. If anything's dripped down, I get it off. Now, I didn't stir this, but if you do decide to keep yours in a jar or whatever, um, if, especially if it's a tall jar, airtight container, you do need to stir it before you dip. I had already dipped these and stirred it, so because sometimes your glue will settle to the bottom. And then after it's dry and I know that it's not damp anywhere or there's not any glue, see it's still damp. My hand's a little bit wet right there. Um, I'll check it and when it's completely dry, I'll put my lid back on. So I don't put my lid back on until I've wiped it off and it's kind of dried off. Okay, that's all I have today for the advanced paper bead glazing method. And if you get into this much, I think you'll find this is a whole lot better. And please, whatever you decide to use, just be careful with it. Read, ask questions. Um, if you do have breathing issues like I do, be careful because these things can fool you. It might say it's safe, but then it might still give off vapors or something that could make you sick or hurt you. So even this glue all, I mean, I, it's not bothering me, but if it was, I wouldn't be able to use it. So just be careful. Read the hazards on the, on the bottles. Ask around. If you want to try some of these other things out here that I've mentioned that I wouldn't, that's fine. That was just my disclaimer. That was my opinions and my opinions only. I'm not knocking anybody that does. It's, it's your craft. You do what you want to do. I'm just showing what works for me. And then I'm giving you a baseline to build on and decide what you want to do. But whatever you do, have fun with it and enjoy it. Because paper beading is a lot of fun. I find it very relaxing. And it's a nice little craft that you can get started and not have to spend a lot of money. And I know a lot of people that sell their paper beads um, at craft fairs, their jewelry they make from them. There is money to be made in it if you decide to. So um, have fun with it. Thank you much. And I will see you again when I do my diamond glaze, my last diamond glaze dip and break them apart. And I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Okay. Bye-bye.